It was produced by the German company Bosch. When I was 32 years old, I can find it there and replace the parts so that she could still have her refrigerator. While we talk about EPR, collection, recycling, uh, I think it's also time that we talk about the producers behaving more responsibly by producing products that are more durable. In today's time, you buy a refrigerator, you can keep it for 10 to 12 years maximum because you design them in a way that after a certain period it will go, they'll go out of order. You come up with new fancy designs, you attract people with new fancy designs and then you want, you know, governments of poor countries like Bangladesh to invest more in having a recycling industry that does not uh, come without energy. You have to have a uh, huge amount of energy to uh, operate a recycling industry in an efficient way. So to me, uh, I would like to go back to the days when I would buy something and that will actually last for decades. And I'll just not throw uh, a phone away because after iPhone 12, iPhone 16 has come to the market without much value addition. And, and the consumers are misled and uh, we very easily throw away our old phone without thinking about where it is ending up. So the behavior, the term of the consumers will change uh, in only if we see that there is a change in the production pattern also. The product producers, the product production industries will also have to be uh, given some compulsions so that the products that they produce do last longer. This is for the sake of uh, the protection of the buyers also. Now, uh, because the buyers change designs, because they keep on uh, making it more attractive, and you probably can't stop creativity, you can't stop innovation. But with very little value addition, uh, things get discarded in today's world. People can afford to buy a new thing, so they get rid of the old one. And that is when the uh, regions like EU, countries like USA, Japan, they came up with very strict waste management regulations. And when they came up with very strict waste management regulations, uh, many of their waste, instead of being treated there, started sneaking through the system and ending up on our shores. And we see that a country like Malaysia sends back containers full of plastic item to the uh, exporting country. And if you see the statistics of Interpol, it's uh, very frightening that every four vessels that leave the EU territory, at least one vessel carries electronic waste that is being dumped either in Africa or in Asia. And we very happily think that old vessels that come to our part of the world uh, give us iron, give us steel, but they also give us huge amount of electric waste. Uh, and we, don't, we simply don't have the capacity to deal with the volume of e-waste that shipwrecking is giving us. Uh, so while the Western countries are saving their societies, there are still legal loopholes in the international legal regime that is allowing electronic waste to end up on our part of the world. Uh, and I think it's, it's a very frightening situation both in Asia and Africa as first we have to deal with our own minis and second we are being treated as dumping grounds by the developed worlds and uh, when we talk about our own regulation that is something that a lesson that I've taken from the uh, presentations you all have made. I can tell you that I probably will call all of you present in this meeting and working on the issue of e-waste 
to come and guide the ministry as to how to best implement the 2021 rules. Having a rule, setting target and not fulfilling it is not the right thing to do. And the items that we, were, we are talking about are TV and phone. So these are being manufactured by houses who are traceable. So these are now not items that are being produced by small traders. Uh, these are items that are being produced by organized industries. So the ministry should engage more uh, and that will be my uh, next work. I'm a bit unwell, so not attending office in person. When I go back to office in person next week, I can tell you that I work with my administration to find out uh, the progress that has been made in implementing the 2021 rules. So far, it applies to emails. Of course, reduction is the solution, the first solution. But reduction will not happen unless the psyche and the business model of the production uh, system changes. That has a spiral effect. You see a refrigerator today that's very nice, you buy it, it has got interesting shelves, you can arrange your food nicely. Five years, years later, you see another refrigerator in the market that has a glass as the door. So everything is transparent and you like the design of that refrigerator. So the producers also, uh, you know, provoke you to buy new things. That's business, but responsible business when they talk about reduction, they have to understand that some of their behavior has the spiral effect of luring people into uh, getting more stuff. That is when uh, reduction, the principle of reduction also applies. It does not only apply at the personal level. All I can tell you is, in Bangladesh, we don't acknowledge a problem as a problem. We keep on roaming around the problem. We come up with nice, glossy policy and legal papers, but we invest very little time to implement those. And I think that is what has to change with the changing realities. If we don't manage to change the poor state of implementation in Bangladesh, we only be jeopardizing the environment and poor lives. EPR, before I took responsibility of this environment, uh, I, I remember the Department of Environment drafted an EPR uh, guideline for the plastic industry. And I have never seen a weak, I mean, any other weaker form of EPR guideline for a deadly industry as that of plastic. Uh, so, once you acknowledge the problem, then only the policies will be addressing those problems correctly. If you don't want to acknowledge the problem and you think that the trend has to continue like that, you will not be able to solve the problem. Since the waste we are talking about, the major sectors involve producers who are traceable. I see no reason as to why the 2021 rule uh, cannot be implemented. I think we need to have a meeting uh, at the soonest with all the producers and find out from them what they have done to ensure that the produce they send out in the market, end of the day, are managed properly. I understand that in today's world of consumerism, you can talk about reduction, but that will still take some time. While reduction takes some time, we have to prepare for recycling, but at the same time, uh, recycling as an industry has to be promoted by the government with all needed standards and supervision. When I say that, uh, the existing ban on polythene shopping bags will be enforced very strictly from 1st of November all across the country. I see that some markets have started uh, giving what they call biodegradable plastic bags. So when I inquired with the department and the ministry, there is no such biodegradable bag that has been certified by our agency. 
So I think it's very important that when we talk about recycling, be it uh, plastic, polythene or e-waste, the entire recycling process is regulated, is monitored and is certified. Anything, anyone just collecting something uh, from the street and handing it over to the person who will have a use of it is not recycling. Even the collection process can be very hazardous. Even that reuse process can be very hazardous if it is not done under control environment. So there is absolute necessity for uh, Bangladesh to be, be become very concerned about how it uh, puts control over e-waste generation, collection, uh, reuse and recycling. It is also very important for Bangladesh to not only sit on the laws that it makes, to start its implementation and I thank the organizers of today's event for uh, giving me some thoughts as to how I can work with my Ministry and Department of Environment and all the producers out there to ensure uh, that the implementation of the 2021 rules uh, start and we as regulators, you as producers, uh, someone else as consumer gets placing confidence in the regulatory region. The way it's uh, happening in Bangladesh is uh, nowhere close to satisfactory, but let us kick off the process of implementing the 2021 uh, rules that we have in hand and let us start the process by involving the producers who produce in bulk and are easily traceable. With these words, I wish the rest of your program a grand success. Please provide me the feedback that you get from uh, the rest of the sessions. I'll definitely take consideration of people's response. Thank you very much.